Through this video, I thought to give you a rough idea for the grade 11 students regarding their 7th chapter, Acids, Bases and Salts. Today, I will describe about the acids. We know that there are different types of acids. Acids means the compound who can release H plus ion in an aqueous medium. There are several acids as hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, acetic acid, citric acid, and the lime, vinegar, pineapple, they also contain acids. So the main feature of an acid is they can eliminate, they can give out H plus ions in an aqueous medium. It should be an aqueous medium. That's why we have put here AQ. HCl is dissociated into H plus and Cl minus ions. Basically, you know that acids can be mainly divided into two groups as strong acids and weak acids. Now we'll see what is the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. A strong acid means these acid they can completely dissociate into a positive ion and a negative ion. Strong acids examples are hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid. So they completely when they are in a aqueous solution they completely turn back to H plus and Cl minus. In sulfuric also the same thing is happening. They convert into H plus and SO4 2 minus. They are dis dissociated from here. This one as the positive part and this one as the negative part. But in here we all know that when we write an equation it should be e equilibrium. To equal to balance this equation as there is two hydrogens we have to put two in front of this H plus. Another strong acid is nitric acid that means HNO3. HNO3 also again dissociated into H plus and NO3 minus. Always remember when you are writing an equation the state aqueous state should be mentioned as well as you have to balance the equation. So those main three acids we call them as the strong acids. Now we will move to the weak acids. What is the difference between strong acid and a weak acid? Now in here you can see same thing, there are minus part and the positive part, but you can see there is a difference in this arrow. Normally in weak acids, we have to use double arrows, that means reverse arrows. That means this reaction can either happen to the forward or either happen to the backward. In the aqueous solution, when we take this one, the acetic acid, CH3COOH, it is dissociated into CH3COO minus, that means this is the negative part and H plus as the positive part. But we show through this equation that in this medium there is acetic acid as well as the negative part as well as the positive part. Always these three components are present in the solution. Then this is carbonic acid H2CO3. Here also H plus from here it get dissociated H plus CO3 minus. As there are two hydrogen, we have to balance the equation. In here, this one is also a weak acid. That means they do not have a good ability to release all the H plus to the solution. Some H plus ions are still with this carbonic acid. Other one is phosphoric acid, H3PO4. From here, it dissociate positive part, negative part. And there is three hydrogen, we have to put three here to balance this equation. So this is the main difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. So acids are divided in two groups on the basis of its ability to release the H+. If it is having high strength of releasing H+, we call them as a strong acid. If it has low strength of releasing H+, we call them as weak acids. Then, in the laboratories, normally these acids are always stored in the concentrated solutions. When you are doing the laboratory experiments, we have to dilute them by adding water. It should be done in a very careful manner. <clears throat> the other part. Now we will discuss about the properties of acids. You know when some acid is fallen into your hand, it will definitely make a burning scar. So when you are doing the practicals, you should be very much careful not to fall any a single drop of acids into your skin. The other one is normally the steel, wood, materials. The uh, because of the acids, they can cause uh, steel and wood corroded or rusting. We know the rusting happens because of the acids and acids promote that reaction. 
Another specific feature is they are in sour taste. But don't go to taste the acids in the laboratory. But normally we know lime, pineapple, um, tomatoes, they are sour in taste. That means always the acids are sour in taste. Another special feature is when a metal is put into acidic solution, it will make the salt and produce the hydrogen gas. That equation is shown in here. Magnesium solid is put into a hydrochloric solution. Then the, uh, the salt of this one, magnesium chloride is produced and hydrogen is evolved. This hydrogen is a gas and we can identify this one by inserting a glowing splint. Then it will give a pop sum. This is giving you a pop sum. From this one we can identify that acids are reacting with magnesium. Another one is acids are reacting with the carbonates and bicarbonates. Either calcium carbonate or calcium bicarbonate, CaCO3 or CaHCO3. And in here they are producing the salt, calcium chloride, water as well as carbon dioxide. This is also another way how we can identify the carbon dioxide. Normally when a glowing splinter is inserted, this flame will get extinguished. It extinguishes the flame. Here also the salt is produced and extra water is produced. Then this is the way how the acids are reacting with the carbonates or bicarbonates. Another one, we all know when the acid reacts with the base, they will produce the salt and the water. So the two as one acid and one base we I have taken is sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide is a base. These are strong acid, strong base. Then they have produced sodium sulfate with salt and H2O water. So these main reactions you have to remember when we are talking about the properties of metals. Another special property is they, these metals, these uh, acids can turn blue litmus into red color. So that part also you have to remember. Then when we are talking about some uses of these strong acids, hydrochloric acid. Normally the hydrochloric acid is used to treat some steel treat the steel that means to get the tarnish color of the steel and hydrochloric acid can be used to <coughs> produce the uh, gelatin from the boning materials in food industry we are using uh, some small amount of diluted hydrochlorine is hydrochloride acid is used to get the gelatin and this is used to produce aqua regia in here they are mixing uh, concentrated nitric acid with concentrated HCl acid. 3 is to 1 ratio. In 3 is to 1 ratio they are dissolving nitric acid with HCl. That solution we call it as the aqua regia. This solution can be used to um, dissolve the metals like gold, platinum. Uh, these are the main features you have to remember regarding HCl. Then when we talk about H2SO4 this is used to produce the fertilizer. We all know the ammonium sulfate, triple superphosphate, they are produced by using the sulfuric acid. As well as the battery acids which are used in the car batteries, they are produced by using diluted uh, sulfuric acid. As well as uh, they can be used to produce paints, paper and plastic materials. Then um, some other uses are they can be used as a dehydrating agent and to dry some gases if you want to dry a gas you can bubble them to a concentrated sulfuric acid solution then you can make the acids dry especially uh, gases dry especially the carbon dioxide nitrogen di nitrogen gases those gases mm. then the other special features of acetic acid this one we all know this one is available in our home always that is the vinegar to produce vinegar we are using the acetic acid then when we are making some prickle, we use acetic acid. In rubber industry, for the coagulation of the rubber, when the rubber is just stepped from the tree, we put some ammonium uh, acetic acid to avoid the coagulation of this, uh, of this rubber. Then um, this can be used in paper industry and to produce the synthetic threads in the uh, textile industry. So this is the main basic part that you have to learn under grade 11 for the acids. We have recalled these things from since grade 6 also. 
So you must be able to identify who are strong acids and weak acids and what are their differences. And what are the main features of the acids, main properties of acids, as well as some uses of HCl, H2SO4 and acetic acid. So from the next video, I hope to give you a brief description regarding the other part of this chapter, that means regarding the bases. Thank you very much.